So today we're going to be looking at something very exciting for the future of Mac gaming and that is frame generation using FSR 3. And this allows you to run Windows only games like Cyberpunk 2077 at more than double the original frame rate. And we can even run DirectX 12 Windows games like Spider-Man Remastered at what appears to be more than 400 frames per second. So in this video today, I'm going to be talking about what FSR 3 frame generation actually is and how it differs from say DLSS or Metal FX. And in addition, I'll be doing a full install tutorial on how to get FSR 3 frame generation working on Windows games on a Mac through crossover including Cyberpunk 2077 and Spider-Man Remastered and Miles Morales. Today's video is sponsored by Ugreen. So Ugreen makes some of the best accessories and cables for the Mac and today they have sent me the wonderful Ugreen Revo Dock Pro 210 docking station to show to you today. So if you're not familiar with USB-C hubs, the Revo Dock Pro 210 is basically one of the best portable docking stations that you can get for your Mac. Whether it's standard USB-A or USB-C, these hubs work as splitters to let you plug more devices into your Mac, which often don't have that many ports to begin with. It's especially great for MacBook Airs, which add much needed functionality like extra USB ports, gigabit ethernet, full size, and also micro SD card ports. Furthermore, the Revo Dock 210 supports 8K monitors at 30 hz and also dual screens at 4K 60, which allows you to play beautiful native Mac games like Death Stranding straight onto a big 4K screen at 60 frames per second using the Revo Dock Pro's HDMI ports. And it's also great for MacBook Pros too, as the Revo Dock 210 supports 100 watt power delivery pass through charging. And this means that you can build your perfect MacBook desk setup by connecting up your charge cable, 4K monitors, gigabit ethernet, USB-A drives, USB-C drives, SD cards, mouse, and keyboard, all in a single elegant USB-C cable. So get your hands on this awesome Ugreen Revo Dock 210 USB-C docking station and click the links at the top of the description. And thank you again for Ugreen for sponsoring this video. So if you haven't heard of FSR before, this basically stands for AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, and it's the third version of this. And this is an upscaling technology, which allows you to run a game at a low resolution and it uses algorithms to upscale it to a high resolution. There are other versions of this, including DLSS and Apple's own Metal FX. However, what's special about FSR 3 is the fact that we have a new feature called frame generation. And basically it takes the existing frames that your computer is generating and it inserts new ones based on an algorithm. And in effect, what it's doing is it's massively increasing the frame rate of your game at very minimal cost to your computer's resources. Now there are competing versions of frame generation. So NVIDIA's DLSS LSS3 also has frame generation as well. However, that is exclusive to NVIDIA hardware, specifically the 4000 series GPUs. And of course, on Apple Silicon Max, we are restricted to Metal FX, and technically this could make use of FSR3 frame generation. After all, this is an open source technology on which Metal FX is already based on. However, Apple have yet to introduce such a feature. So technically on the Apple Silicon Mac, this feature isn't available. That is until these features have been hacked in by modders like Luke FZ, who have created AMD FSR mods, which actually work on Windows versions of games using something called Crossover. So if you don't know what Crossover is, it's a Windows translation layer, which allows you to run various Windows DirectX 12 games on the Apple Silicon Mac. And of course, this translation layer has quite a lot of overheads. We're translating x86-64 into the ARM64 chip. We're translating Windows API calls into macOS API calls. And we're also translating DirectX 12 graphics API into the Metal graphics API. Basically, all of these translation layers introduce a substantial amount of performance loss. And what this means is that FSR3 frame generation is going to help bring back the performance of these Windows games and get them working as well as possible on the Apple Silicon Mac. So in this video today, I'm going to show you the full tutorial on how to get FSR3 modded into a few games on the Apple Silicon Mac, specifically the Windows versions of games running through Crossover. So ideally, you're going to know how to actually install a game using Crossover, using D3D Metal and Enabling M-Sync. And then once you know that, you'll be able to jump into this tutorial and make use of these FSR 3 mods. What we need to do is to go to Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description for the Luke FC Patreon page. And basically you need to log into a Patreon account and then you need to make a purchase or basically a subscription to their Patreon membership and then you get access to the FSR 3 mods. So this is access to unfinished versions of everything that Luke FC is doing, basically doing tons of modding for FSR 3. And once you basically signed in, what we're going to do is to upgrade our membership so that we get at least the very base tier, which is really worth doing supporting these creators. So just go ahead and and sign up for the beta enjoy it here. So once we're confirmed members, we can click get started. And now you've got access to a ton of Luke FC's mods. It's also a good idea to join the Discord server and connect up so you can get any help with any specific games. In order to do it, just make sure 
you go into your settings and into more and then make sure we are connected apps are connected up to your discord account and that we are connected up correctly then we can click on join server and then within the discord app you're going to find lph Luke's Patreon hideout here, and then you're going to be able to get access to all of the mods. So the server is called Luke's Patreon hideout. And basically when you access this, you can see quite a lot of compatibility information. The most important one is this one here called community resources. You're going to find a thread here called how to install and enable FSR 3.0 FG frame generation using the Luke FC mod. So if we look at the top of this thread, it basically has very detailed instructions on how to install FSR 3 frame generation on multiple games. For example, the one we're going to be relying on is for Cyberpunk 2077, but uh, we have a full list down here if you want to see more. So let's look at Cyberpunk 2077. So this here gives all of the instructions for Cyberpunk 2077. The main one, which is common to all of the mods, is to access this website here, mods.lukefc.xyz. And basically what you need to do is to log in using Patreon. As long as you are signed up to that beta tier, then you're going to have access to the mods inside. So we are now logged into the Patreon tier and we can see all the mods do what we want to install. So I'm going to be downloading the latest version here. So at the time of recording it's 10.2 h1 and here we're going to select a game so there's a list of games here all of the games which are supported and we also have generic versions of the mod if you want to enable these here for game that's not supported and try it out we're going to scroll up and find cyberpunk 2077 and then you can see here the mod operation mode i'll explain these mod operation modes a little bit later but basically if you use the default mode and you select a dlss it's going to use fsr3 upscaling instead if you use one of these modes for frame generation in the in-game menus it's going to replace it with fsr3 frame generation so basically there are two files that we want to download the common mod files and then the fsr2 to fsr3 for fsr2.2 here so these are the two mods that we need to install and then these are also instructions below about how to actually install them so first of all let's grab those mods so the common mod file and then an fsr2 to fsr3 for fsr2.2 so in our finder under downloads we have these two files here and basically what i want you to do is to extract all of these files within the cyberpunk 2077 bin x64 folder so so we need to locate that folder and then put all of those files in. I'm not going to be covering if you're using a script extension mod called Red or XT, which is going to be put in a different location. We're just going to be getting vanilla Cyberpunk 2077 working at first. So we have these two files. What I'm going to do is to extract them. So just double click to extract. We're going to get this FSR2 to FSR3.asi, and then we're going to extract this common folder as well. And you can see the inside of this common folder, which I'm going to be copying in to the relevant file. So next we're going to command N, and then I'm going to navigate to our Cyberpunk 2077 install. So often this is found in the bottle itself. If you go to crossover and then you control click on Steam and click on open C drive, then you're going to open up a finder window within the bottle location. Often people install games within program files under Steam and then under Steam apps and then common. So lots of games are kept here. Basically, I'm going to put my Cyberpunk folder on the right and then the mod files on the left. And what we want to do is follow the instructions. We want to put things inside the bin x64 folder. So we're going to navigate to the bin and then x64 folder. And then I'm going to double click on here to make it a little bit easier to drag and drop. So what we want to do here on the left hand side is basically select everything. So you want win mm, winmm.dll, this nvngx file, these reg files and the ASI. So just for simplicity, I'm just going to copy everything into the folder x64 under the Cyberpunk main install. So I'm going to move these here and those are all going to copy into our file here. We can have everything here. So I often like to sort by date modified. You can see what's going to change. So next essential step, which is not mentioned in the instructions, is we need to allow the native override for winmm. So within our bottle here, we're going to go to one configuration and within one configuration here, we're going to go to libraries and we need to add an exception for the winmm. So that's this file here, winmmdll, which we're going to be using instead of the native ones. So we need to be typing in the word winmm and then we're going to press add. And we're going to ignore that error message and winmm is going to be at the bottom here and we're going to be ready to launch this game. So now that that's added in, we're going to make sure we have D3D Metal and MSync turned on and we're going to be watching the x64 folder here. So that's quite important. And within the Steam library here, we're going to go ahead and press play and then going to launch the game. So what's important is that the first time we run the game, it's actually going to generate a file and we're going to have this black window open up. So the mod is not working until this black window pops up first. And then what's going to do is going to generate this file here, a config.toml file, which is the latest within the x64 file here. So at this stage, you're free to go ahead and close the game 
because we need to change some configuration files first before we can move on to the next step. So what I recommend we do is control click and then open with and then open with text edit. And we're gonna make some changes to this TOML file. Let's make this a bit larger. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to make sure that we change this. So we don't have an NVIDIA GPU. Of course, there's an Apple Silicon Mac, but we're gonna trick the game into thinking we do have one. I'm gonna also apply this fix as well, which is specific macOS crossover support. So that's really for us. And then also, if you happen to be trying to run this game on an Unreal Engine game, not just Cyberpunk 2077, you wanna enable this one as well. So I'm still experimenting with the changes to this file but what I found is that if we change this mode to replace DLSS FG make sure to click on file save as then this will enable frame generation and what we're going to do is to launch Cyberpunk 2077 and then enable this option in game. So once again you'll know this mod is active because this black window will turn up and it might take a bit of time for this game to launch using this method so just be patient and you'll know it's really working when this Nvidia signature is verified. So now the game splash menu has come up and if we go into the settings menu for graphics what you're going to see is that we have the option to enable DLSS frame generation and in reality this is actually AMD FSL 3 frame generation we're going to turn this on and then launch the game so a weird thing about running the benchmark for example is the fact that the in-game frame counter is saying 000 however the metal HUD on the top right hand side is showing a different frame rate now the in-game counter is definitely not zero however the metal HUD isn't reliable either you can see that the minimum frame time in the single digits is pretty low something like three to nine FPS. However, the maximum frame time of 999.99 .99 is pretty much impossible. So take the actual frame rate numbers with a pinch of salt. However, the smoothness of the gameplay on the right hand side with frame generation enabled is pretty much undeniable. Now, FSR 3 frame generation can't work miracles. We're still limited by the 8 gigabytes of shared memory between the system RAM and the graphics memory. And whenever we get close to hitting this, then the frame is going to tank anyway. However, in gameplay moments where we aren't hitting this 8 gigabyte limit on the lowest and MacBook Air. It actually takes it from a janky 20 FPS experience to something smooth, running at pretty much double the original frame rate. So next we're going to be looking at Spider-Man Remastered and modding FSR 3 into it. So one thing that we need to do to our bottle is to go to one configuration and then we need to change our version of Windows to Windows 11 so that this can actually run correctly. So just press OK here and then we're going to avoid any error messages. And then we need to be making sure that we're using Windows version 11 rather than 10 and we need to make sure that we have WinMM as added as a native library override. So just type in WinMM and press add and then press OK to make use of this mod. The next thing that we need to do is to go to the Discord again. So that's Luke's Patreon hideout, which I explained earlier in the video. Basically, we want to go back to the community resources, how to install games. And basically, we go down to Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered and we check out these files here. So we're going to click on the link to go back to mods.lukefz.xyz and log in via Patreon. Just log into our account. And then we want to be downloading the latest version by selecting the game here. So just scroll down and then select Spider-Man Remastered. And then we're going to download the common mod files and the FSR2 to FSR3 for 2.1 here. So we're going to go ahead and extract the zip files. And then we want to copy and paste these files into the Spider-Man Remastered folder, which we can find in the Steam apps. Go to open the C drive and then navigate to program files, Steam, Steam apps, common and then find Spider-Man Remastered there and then within the folder we can see the Spider-Man EXE we want to basically go ahead and copy and paste those six items that we have earlier and they sit alongside the Spider-Man EXE. Next we need to follow the instructions on the Discord and it also has instructions here on the actual mod page itself. You'll see that we need to copy and paste this command into the launch arguments of Steam. So go back into Windows Steam, we'll right click on the game, go to properties and then make sure that this this force reflex markers launch option is added there and then we can go ahead and start the game. I'm going to start the game here and we're going to keep an eye on the actual folder itself. Once this black window opens up what's going to happen is that this TML file is going to get generated. So we're going to close this and then shut the game down and then we need to make changes to the config TML. So control click open with text edit and then at this stage what we can do is basically change the default, change it to replace the LSS 
FG. So just place that command there. Then we need to change the fake NVIDIA GPU to true. That allows us to toggle on the DLSS support. And we need to turn this one on macOS crossover support. Then we're going to press file and then save. And then now we're ready to go ahead and then launch the game properly with the mod enabled. So we'll press play. So you'll know it's working because this black screen is coming up. So it takes about a minute or two to get to this stage. It's saying here an error message about the graphics card. Just ignore this, press OK. And then we have the settings menu here. We're going to tweak a setting. We're going to turn on DLSS frame generation. So this option was not available unless the mod is active. So just enable this. I'm going to put this on quality mode and then graphics. I've got this on very low. I turned off all of these settings here. Press OK. Now we can launch the game. Then here it's saying something about graphics drivers. We don't have graphics drivers on a Mac, so don't worry about that. So once we're in game, just be aware that you need to have exclusive full screen turned on. Otherwise, you're going to get this weird doubling effect on your screen. So here I'm testing on my N3 Max chip, comparing FSR3 quality with frame generation against these bog standard FSR 2.1 in quality mode and there's a pretty stark dramatic frame rate difference but like I said with the Cyberpunk 2077 video you shouldn't trust the metal HUD frame rate counter as it's theoretically going up to 999.99 frames per second which is impossible. In this comparison we can see frame generation going as high as 400 FPS which is more than four times higher than the original FSR 2.1 quality mode. And here we're looking at Spider-Man Miles Morales so because this uses the same engine basically this steps are virtually identical. Here we can see pretty much very similar huge increases in the frame rate counter for frame generation. However, it's hard to feel any actual difference because this is after all running on the highest end M3 Max chip. Both videos are going over 60 frames per second, so you won't be able to see a difference on a 60 FPS capped YouTube video. However, when we look back at the M1 MacBook Air, the differences are a bit more visual. The right hand side with frame generation turned on just feels a lot smoother than the vanilla version on the left. And this is even more apparent in the combat sections of the game. And this is where a 10 to 15 FPS boost in performance is a pretty huge uptick and makes a substantial difference on the lowest end M1 Mac. So unfortunately, I'm not an expert on the modding of frame generation into games. It actually took me a really long time to get a lot of these games working in the first place. What I'm really hoping today is that this is going to be a starting point for everyone. I really want people to experiment with the FSR3 mods, see if they can work on other games too. It'd be really cool to see people subscribe to Luke FC's Patreon, get access to the Discord, and then make sure to check out the macOS channel for that particular Discord server, because that's a really good repository for all of the information about these FSR3 mods. There's also another FSR3 frame generation modder called Pure Dark. And unfortunately, I've not been able to get any of Pure Dark's mods working because they rely on something called Reshade in order to activate the mod itself. And that doesn't seem to be working on crossover. I'd love to be proven wrong. So this is really a starting point. I really want to get more people involved in modding FSR3 frame generation into games. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.